David Ruffin, the misunderstood icon. You know, everyone, they has their own demons, and everyone have their own way of fighting them. You can say what you want about David, but one thing you can't say, you can't say he's not a musical legend. David, he brought the temptations from unknown singers to legends. With that being said, let's cue that intro. The Temptations will bring in a new year with David Ruffin as a new member of the group. Smokey Robinson will bring the group a new song that became a hit. This song was The Way You Do The Things You Do. This song will reach number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. The Way You Do The Things You Do was recorded just two weeks after Al Bryan was fired. The Temptations first album was released on April 13, 1964. This album will reach number 95 on the Billboard Top 200 charts. The group, they will release three songs with Eddie Kendricks on as lead. These songs are I Be In Trouble, that reached number 33 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Girl, Why You Wanna Make Me Blue, that reached number 26 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. And The Girls Are Right With Me. Now, this song didn't reach the charts as it was just shy of missing the Billboard Hot 100 charts coming in at 102. Although, I do believe this song should have been at least a top 20 hit. Now, Smokey Robinson, he wanted to write a song for David to sing, as he believed if he can write the perfect song for David, it would become a hit, as David's singing voice was mellow but gruff. So, while on the Motortown Review Tour, Smokey along with Ronnie Wright will write the song, My Girl. This was the group's first song to reach number one on the R&B charts, and over 50 years later, this song is still on the R&B charts, and even considered to be the group's signature song. After My Girl, it was David's turn to showcase his skills. Now David, he was seen lead on the next three songs. These songs was It's Growing, they reached number 18 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, and number 3 on the R&B charts. Since I Lost My Baby, they reached number 17 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, and number 4 on the R&B charts. And My Baby, they reached number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number four on the R&B charts. So far, every song that David sung lead in, it was a top 20 Billboard hit. Now that's very impressive. So remember, in the beginning, Paul and Eddie, they share a lead. Now with David coming in, Paul, he felt overlooked. Paul, he would tell everyone, I can sing too. Now Paul, he would respond with the song, Don't Look Back, that reached number 83, on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number 14 on the R&B charts. This song was a beloved song among the fans as it was a song that Paul would regularly perform during their live performances. Now, Norman Whitfield, he had his eyes on the group for a while and he really wanted to work with them. Norman, he would express his feelings to Barry and Barry told him if Smokey's next song doesn't reach the top 20, then he could have it. So you know Norman, he was hoping for a flop. Smokey, he would write the song Get Ready, that reached number 1 on the R&B charts and number 29 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Now, since Get Ready didn't reach the top 20 on the Billboard charts, it was now Norman's time to shine. Norman, he would write Ain't Too Proud to Beg, that reached number 1 on the R&B charts and number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100s. Norman's song outperformed Smokey's, so this earned Norman the title of the Temptations head songwriter and producer. Norman, he wanted to change the group image from the babyface love songs to more of a mature, edgy sound, something like a James Brown sound. The Classic 5 era, or better known as the David Ruffin era, nearly every song that had David voice became a top 20 hit. Although David didn't bring the group a Grammy, there's countless songs that could have won. <laughs> Back 
Born Cornelius Grant on April 27, 1943 in Fairfield, Texas. Now Cornelius, he was raised by his grandmother. He really adored her and at the age of nine, he taught himself how to play the guitar. By 13, his family would move to Detroit, Michigan and this is where he would continue on working on his craft. And by the time he turned 15, he started playing in clubs, bars, and talent shows. With all his hard work paying off, at the age of 18, he earned himself to work with Motown artists like Mary Wells and Marvin Gaye. In 1964, at the age of 21, the Temptations would hire him as a group permanent guitarist. Now we all know the group had five members, but Cornelius' role is important, as he helped write some of the group's songs, like I Know I'm Losing You. And he also created the guitar riff that's heard in the opening scene. In 1964, Barry Gordy would sign Charlie Actons to be the choreographer for all Motown acts. This would put Paul to the side as he was the group's original choreographer. He was also the Supremes choreographer as well. In 1965, Paul, he would have an affair with the Supreme hairdresser, Winnie Brown. The Paul's role with the group growing less and less every day and his role with the company, Paul, he would face depression. Along with him living a double life, this will play a toll on him as he would develop a drinker problem. Now Paul, he never drunk before. Now, for someone who go from only drinking milk to drinking alcohol, this will tell you the type of pain that Paul, he was experiencing. Also, he was dealing with sickle cells. And at the time, there was no help or treatment for this disease. Norman Whitfield had his own team of songwriters, just like Hosler, Dozer, and Hosling. Norman brought in Roger Penzibini and Barry Strong, forming Whitfield, Strong, and Penzibini. This dream team of songwriters would produce I Wish It Would Rain, that reached number one on the R&B charts, and number four on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. And I Could Never Love Another, that reached number one on the R&B charts, and number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Fun fact. This was the last song that featured David Ruffin. Now Roger, he found out that his wife was unfaithful. So he wrote, I wish it would rain and I could never love another. He wrote these songs expressing the pain that he felt and how he was unable to leave his wife, even with her having an affair. So if anyone could deliver the sound that was needed for these songs, it was David, especially on the song, I Wish It Would Rain. On New Year's Eve, 1967, one week after the release of I Wish It Would Rain, Roger, he would commit suicide. He was 23 years old. Now, although Patti LaBelle was never signed to Motown, she often hung around that circle. During the late 60s, Patty and Otis, they began dating, even getting engaged. She would say that she believed she was more in love with the Temptations than Otis. Now Patty, she would receive a wake up call when Otis wanted her to move to Detroit and quit singing. She would break off their engagement nicely, but she let it be known that she would never stop singing for no one. Also, she said that she was glad that she didn't marry him. So um, I ended up seeing Otis and we ended up becoming engaged. And then he gave me this beautiful ring and he talked about, you know, what kind of life we were gonna have and everything. And I'm saying, yeah. I said, am I attracted to a temptation or to a man that I wanna be with? I think I was more in love with the temptations. I don't think this is gonna work. And the reason I said it is because he wanted me to move to Detroit and stop singing and not use this. I don't think so. I said, really? <laughs> I said very nicely, the engagement is all. I have to sing for the rest of my life, no matter what. If they weren't paying me, I have to sing. <laughs> That's how it is with me. No matter what I'm gonna sing, yes. <laughs> I still really care for him very much. He's a sweet man, but I'm glad I didn't marry you, boo-boo. Now, like I said earlier, between the years of 1964 
1968, The Temptations went from unknown hopefuls to international stars. They will be broadcast all over TV on shows like American Bandstand, The Ed Sullivan Show, and The Hollywood Palace. In 1967, David, he began demanding special treatment as a lead singer. For an example, David began writing in a separate limousine with his signature glasses on it. Also, he wanted to change the group name to David Ruffin and the Temptations. Now, I see no problem with this, as he was the lead singer. Plus, it's been done before, like the Miracles and the Supremes. Now, even though Florence Ballard was a founding member of the group, Diana Ross became the lead singer. But unlike Otis, Flo, she could actually sing. Before David, the Temptations was nobody's. It wasn't until David bought stardom to the group. Now, even though David was a star, he also had some personal problems he had to deal with, like his relationship with fellow Motown star, Tammy Terrell. So for more details on the relationship with David and Tammy, check out her video in the description box below. David also had a real heavy drug problem, and it started to play an effect as he would start missing rehearsals. He felt like he didn't need it because everyone was coming to see him anyway. I'm the one selling the records. They coming to see me. They coming to see the temptations. Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. You wish you could work it the way I do. Now David Cockiness will ultimately get him fired for the group after he missed a very important showing at the Cleveland, Ohio Super Club that was attended by Barbara Gale Martin. On June 27, 1968, the Temptations will officially fire David. Are you crazy? I'm sorry. Y'all are stupid. David, get off me. Y'all ain't nothing without me. I made your asses. You can't fire me. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Y'all can't do me like this. Otis, he had his eyes on Dennis Edwards, who was a member of the Contours. Now, Eddie and David, they will become real close over the last four years. Eddie, he would beg Otis not to kick David out the group, but everything was already in place to bring Dennis in. Now, Dennis and David, that was cool. Now, actually, they was friends. David actually gave Dennis his blessing and told him that the group was looking at him to replace him. On July 7th, 1968, Dennis made his debut with the group. Everything was going great until they would sing a song that had David as lead. David, he would walk on stage and snatch the mic from Dennis, embarrassing him. Although the fans loved this as they thought it was part of the show, Otis, he was livid. This act would continue until they let David back into the group. The next day, David, he would miss a show. This causing him to get kicked out the group permanently. With David's departure, this will cause Eddie to start drifting apart from the group. On July 9th, 1968, Dennis Edwards officially replaced David Ruffin as lead singer, giving birth to the psychedelic soul era. Thanks to all my subscribers for watching, and those that's not a subscriber, thank you as well. If you like what you see and would like to see more, check out a few more videos. And until then, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.